Welcome to the eighth uh, Rolling Connect webinar. My name is Anna Peiko and I'm the GLC platform manager. Um, now you probably know this by heart, but I still have to remind you that this session is being recorded and the recording will be shared with you sometime next week. Now, when sending your messages in chat, please make sure to send them to everyone. And I already see lots of messages there. So thank you so much for greeting, for your greetings, for saying hi. Um, uh, thank you. Finally, I would like to ask everyone to please fill in a very, very short uh, survey form at the end of the webinar. So this is a great opportunity to let us know how we're doing, how we can do better next time, and of course, to propose new topics that you think might be helpful for your professional career. Now, in terms of announcements, um, I won't be saying much today. I just wanted to remind our French speaking audience that on April 22nd, and that's uh, exactly seven days from now, from now um, next week, at 10 o'clock, Washington DC time, we will be hosting Nerdi Shahed. He is a French speaking master trainer and he will be speaking about coaching techniques. Uh, this webinar will be delivered in French. So please, if you reside if uh, in one of the French speaking countries, look out for your invite and at the end of um, this week. And if you don't receive your invite, please make sure to visit the homepage of the Grow Link Connect website. We will post the link to register there as well. And now I would like to welcome our presenter today. So Adola Babatunde. Adola is uh, the IFC master trainer. She's also the IFC LPI assessor and a trainer. And I see Adola joined us uh, on camera right now. She's also a John Maxwell speaker, trainer, and a coach. Adola is the founder of the Present Tried Academy. This is an online public speaking academy for women. She's also the co-founder and a lead business consultant at Consulting Youth Nigeria. She's also the founder and the current uh, lead facilitator at Inside Business Consulting, uh, where, she, where she's responsible for designing and delivering courses to corporate clients. Now, obviously, Adola has tons of experience, both as a training professional and as an entrepreneur, and I believe she has lots of insights to share with us today. So Adola, big welcome. Thank you so much, Anna, for that beautiful introduction. I'm so grateful. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you're watching from. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon, morning, and evening, wherever you're watching from. Thank you, Yvonne Mehdi from Tunisia. I see you, Isaac from Kenya, Runin Dala from South Africa. Thank you, I see you from everywhere around the world. It's such a pleasure. I'm so excited to be here, and I'm so glad that I'll be sharing ideas, and I welcome everyone to share their ideas as well. It will be a very interactive session, so please use the chat box to answer questions and send in your contributions. I look forward to learning from everyone on this webinar. So please remember, I won't only be sharing, I look forward to also you sharing with us on the webinar. If you're not familiar with the platform, Please look to the bottom right of your screen, the bottom right of your screen, you will see the chat, the chat box there. Please endeavor to type in your questions and contributions and click on send or enter. You can click on the enter button on your laptop or your phone and then you can send it. So let's move on. I'd like us to take a quick poll. I'd like us to take a quick poll and I'm going to launch that poll shortly. In that poll, I just want you to choose an option. I'm launching the poll now. Thank you. So the poll has been launched and here's the question. Has your income declined due to the restrictions on physical training? Thank you. I see your answers. Thank you so much. I see your answers. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes. We just have a few. The poll is going to last for just one minute. So please don't mind the five minutes you see there's just one minute and then we'll call it a wrap. Fantastic. I see 71% have finished. Thank you so much. Keep it coming. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So I'm going to close the poll in about in about four seconds. The poll is going to close. Right. 
Thank you. So I'm going to share the results of the poll. I'm going to share the results of the poll with you. And here are the results. I hope you can see it. Um, Anna, can you see the results of the poll? Uh, yes, definitely. Uh, it seems like most people have said yes, their income has declined. Uh, some people are not sure, and I guess uh, only a couple of people responded that uh, their income has not uh, changed since the pandemic. Thank you so much, Anna. Thank you so much. So what this shows us is that most people on this call today are saying their income has reduced, has declined due to the restrictions on physical training. So I want us to hold that thought, and this is going to lead us into the question of how do we then increase this income despite the restrictions on physical training? That is one of the questions we're going to be answering today, and that is why I am sharing strategies to help you remain profitable despite the restrictions on physical training. Okay, so I'm going to stop that. So you can, I'll, I'll show you how to clear your screen, but right now let's go to the next slide. Now you can go back and open your chat. All you have to do is go up, click on the chat. You see the name chat. There's a small arrow by the side of your chat box. Just click on that arrow to open your chat box up again. You can open up that arrow to open your chat box up again. So once again, I want to say welcome. Thank you so much for being on this webinar with me and the IFC team. And I'll just take you straight into a little bit of introduction about myself. A little bit of introduction about myself. My name is Adeola Babatunde, and I'm a certified IFC master trainer and TPMA assessor. And I want to focus on my 11 years experience in learning and development. I'm also a business consultant and I focus on MSMEs, which is micro, small and medium enterprises. And I do training and coaching. And Anna mentioned earlier, I'm the founder of the online public speaking academy for women, Present Rights Academy. And I have experience teaching women on how to build profitable online businesses. So you see, I'll be sharing from this wealth of knowledge, and I also want you to share with me and share with everyone else because I don't know everything, and I also want to learn from you. So looking forward to learning from you in the chat box. So this is a brief history of what happened with my financials over the past 15 months. So in 2019, I made about X amount of money. And in 2020, I was able to make that amount plus a 10% increase. So I actually made money at 10% more revenue using these strategies that I'm sharing with you today. And in 2021, this is 15th of April, when I did a quick calculation, I have been able to make 16% more. So at, at this time last year, when I checked this time last year and this time this year have even been able to make more revenue compared to April 2020. And so what are these strategies that I'm using to, you know, make this income are the things I'm going to be sharing with you on this webinar. So here are the session objectives. In this webinar, I'm going to show you how to discover strategies that can help you as a trainer earn more and you would recognize opportunities to create new products and reach new clients. And finally, I'd like to encourage you to participate, to encourage you, the participants, to think outside the box. So if you're ready to go on this journey with me, I'd like you to type a yes in the chat box. Yes, so that I know that you're ready and we're all ready to go. Thank you, BP now. Sharma, I see you. Yes, Mary. Abdullah, I love that energy. Abdullah says yes, and Philip says for sure. I also can't wait. I love it. Thank you so much. Now let's move on to the next thing. I want to ask you one question. Thank you, Radhi. I see your yes. Thank you. Now let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. How will this webinar benefit you? I want you to type your answer in the chat box. I'd really love to know how will this webinar benefit you.
Thank you. As you type your answers in the chat box, I'm looking forward. Thank you. MSC Gini says, discover new things. Okay, Anna, you want to help us here? Yes, yes. Uh, yes. Learn some new strategies, new ideas to get inspired. Some people just don't know yet what exactly to expect, so uh, I guess they will decide as we go. Uh, to, they would like to compare notes, learn new stuff, learn new strategies, so we're just repeating. Um, other people say that it keeps them educationally active during the pandemic. They would like to know how to adapt to the changes with the new strategies. Yeah, so it looks like a lot of people would like to learn about the new strategies, how to increase revenue and improve their business. So thank you everyone for contributing. I see your contributions pouring in. I see looking at increasing revenue, expecting to learn new things. And it's okay if you don't know what to expect. I sure will be sharing some strategies with you that have worked for me. And yes, we can compare notes. So thank you, Kamara Bipina and everyone who has dropped a contribution. So let's go to the next. What is one key expectation that you have for this session? I'd love to know. Please type in the chat box, what is one key expectation that you have for this session? Please type that in the chat box. Awesome. I love it. Alamani says that um, she, she would, uh, or sorry, he or she, I'm not sure, that uh, she would like to change her career or his career, I'm sorry, to gain knowledge, to share more ideas. Well, there are other people actually who would like to launch a new career. Asad says he would like to get new insights. Yvonne mentions uh, she would like to learn about the new strategies. Again, uh, Isaac says that uh, he would like to get to know more ideas how to grow uh, training business, how to grow revenue, increase revenue. And in general, Alvira says that she would like to know um, how to start, I guess, as a training professional. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anna. Thank you so much. So just to give you a quick, just to give you a quick overview, I'll be sharing methods to help you know the strategies that would help you increase, improve your revenues. So we might not be able to help you we may not go deep into uh, so you would acquire knowledge and share ideas you acquire knowledge we may not go deep into maximizing your business but you will definitely learn more strategies so i see efficient thinking um we will do our best to think together about the strategies that you can use we'll do our best to talk to you know, talk uh, and think together on the strategies that you can use. Um, so I think those are the things that we're going to touch. Yes, you will learn new strategies. Yes, you will gain knowledge. And so to the person that wants to start a new career, I'm not sure that the contents would actually help you start a new career. However, you will learn some strategies that can help you if you're already a trainer to start earning more profitably. Okay. Thank you all so much. Thank you all so much for sharing your expectations thank you and yes so the person who said add to my skills of increasing revenue yes we'll be sharing strategies and so that is right that is one of the expectations that we hope to meet in this webinar thank you so i'm going to be opening another poll and i'm going to be launching it shortly and that poll is also going to take one minute so please just click, once you see the poll, just click on your answer real quick so we can get the results. The poll has been launched. And the question is, since the pandemic, demand for face-to-face -face training has not returned to what it used to be. Do you strongly agree? Do you agree? Are you indifferent? Do you disagree or do you strongly disagree? Thank you so much. Please, thank you so much. I see someone answering in the chat box. Would you please answer the question just by just selecting your answer in the poll? Thank you. I see many people already choosing their responses. Thank you so much. 
think we have some users who join us uh, from the phone, so maybe they are not able to click on the answers in the poll. So thank you so much for sending your responses anyway in chat. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you, Anna, for mentioning that. So to so those of you who are joining us from the from the phone, yes, please, you can send your response in chat. Thank you, Anna, for that. Okay, so we have just one second more, and I'm closing the poll now. Okay. Right. So it's waiting. The poll is being collated. So we see the beautiful results. Thank you to everyone who participated in the polls. And thank you to everyone who also participated in the chat box. Okay. Right. So I'm going to share the poll results with everybody so we can see. Can we all see the poll results? Well, I, I can see poll results. So it seems like um, pretty much everyone either agrees or strongly agrees with the statement. Yes. yes. Thank you so much. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are all either strongly agreeing or agreeing that since the pandemic began, face to face training has not returned to what it used to be. And this means that we have to creatively find a way as trainers and training professionals to still make sure that we are profitable, even though face-to-face -face training is not back to what it used to be. I personally had, some, had to stop, had to put a hold on physical training sometimes in March, and I haven't been able to do any physical training at all since about March 2020. And I guess it's similar for most people who responded. So thank you so much for participating in the poll. However, now that we know that physical trainings haven't returned to what they used to be, you also have to remember that out of limitation comes creativity. This is a quote by Debbie Allen, an executive producer and artistic director. She says, out of limitation comes creativity. And you'd agree that when there is, it doesn't matter if things are just not going the way we want, there is always something we can do to make things better. And so this webinar is where we think about strategies to still remain profitable, even though face-to-face -face training isn't back to where it used to be. And so I'd like you to do something real quick. Thank you so much for contributing all along. I want you to share in the chat box in just five words, in just five words or less, how you usually get training work and contract. So as a trainer, as a training facilitator, what strategies have you used in the past? How have you gotten training work in the past and training contracts? Thank you, uh, thank you so much. I see the comments. Thank you, Isaac Konyago. Thank you. Thank you. How have you, in five words or less? Awesome, I love it. Thank you, Asad Zaidi. Asad Zaidi said beads. Caroline M. Maringa says beads and references. Rahit Sami says outline referrals. Francisco Junai Rio says beads. Michael says partnerships. Medi says social media. I love it. Whoa, Roddy. Mary Bennett says referrals beads free training. Anna, do you want to take over from here? How about a golf course? I love that. <laughs> uh, Personal and corporate contra contracts, so old clients, definitely. Okay, word of mouth, uh, solicitation, online bids, uh, referrals, social media. So yeah, these are all the channels that have been listed. I love it. Thank you so much. I, I love it too. Rahid, Sami, I love the golf course. I love the solicitation, social media, personal contact. Thank you, Aisha, too. So these are, now we are trainers, and these are definitely ways that we get training contracts. However, for us to agree in the earlier poll that physical trainings have reduced, then it means that these methods are not enough right now. Maybe after the whole pandemic thing is over, maybe things will return back to normal. We don't know what normal will be, 
but right now we have to do something something else something creative and so thank you everyone so thank you so much for all of those contributions those I mean wonderful lovely contributions and just to add to what you've already said i have here submitting company proposals to organizations these are things that we've, we've all done or maybe most of us have done this is what i have done personally to submit my company proposal to organizations in search of training work or contracts and also following up with decision makers in organizations to get contracts. So I follow up with the people to say, hey, I submitted my proposal. Where are we? What are the um, options available? How is it looking? Are, are we going to get this work? And so this is what we and everything you've mentioned, including the personal and personal and corporate contact or client referrals. This is how we've all done it. Social media. This is how we've all done it in the past. And so now we want to do something different. So very quickly, I just want to mention again, because I really want to be sure that you're participating and you don't have any issues with putting your chat in the comment section. So right where you see this little arrow beside the chat box, please ensure you click that arrow and drop it down. Then the chat box opens and you can always contribute. Okay, thank you so much for joining this um, interactive session. Now, here's another question that I want you to Put your answer in the chat box. This is a question that would help anyone on this call. So what strategies have you used to remain profitable as a trainer since the pandemic began? So I would love to call to all the trainers, all the facilitators, everybody on this call, please share with us. Remember I said it's a sharing session. I'm also learning from you. We're all learning from one another. So please share with us the strategies that you have used to remain profitable as a trainer since the pandemic began. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Wow. Wow. So uh, some people say they stayed in contact with the CEO, I guess, probably client organizations. Uh, but that's my understanding. Um, attend online events, I guess, such as this one. Um, continue professional development. Uh, give smaller tips for free to gain traffic and attention in social media. Work with uh, finding new clients, propose online training. Some people changed uh, their strategy altogether. Yeah. Um, pivoted and did more recruiting, coaching, finding clients on social media. So it seems like um, online uh, platforms have been very helpful. Mm -hmm. So yes, uh, lots of people have gone digital or mm -hmm. started working with reduced numbers, n n numbers of trainers. Um, some people are saying they're conducting webinars, getting in touch, uh, getting in contact and sending newsletters and SMEs to existing clients. Uh, focus on YouTube, continue to be more friendly with existing clients to liaise with new ones corporately. Or even offer free training for now. So I believe Thank this is it in a nutshell. Yeah. Thank you so much, Anna. And thank you to everyone for contributing. You see, when I see these responses, I'm saying to myself, do we still need to have this webinar? <laughs> you all already have it sorted out. These strategies are so powerful. I'm seeing some very powerful strategies that I would use when I go back to remain profitable. So thank you so much for sharing. I love them all. I, lo I love the free training. I love the individual online coaching. I'm so passionate about that. And Focusing on YouTube, I, I really wish we could open up some more. Maybe we'd have opportunities to share deeply into some of these things. But thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much. All right, so let's think outside the box. Let's think outside the box today. Now we have been doing a lot of physical trainings. That's what we've always known. And right now, most of us are going more digital. Some of us are doing Zoom meeting with some clients. Some of us are doing continuous professional development, offering free trainings. We're thinking outside the box. So let's go further outside the box, okay? And I wanna share three strategies today, just three, 
because I know we don't have all day. And these three strategies I'm sharing with you today are you, uh, for to you to increase your profitability as a trainer. Number one is for you to create pre-recorded classes, right? Yes, I love what Rahid Sami, I love this. He said, how about thinking like there is no box? I absolutely love it. Why not think, why not throw the box away altogether and just think? I totally love it. Thank you, Rahid, for sharing. So these three strategies I'm sharing, I'm going to be focusing on today because as you can see, there are lots of strategies. Number one, we're going to be focusing on creating pre-recorded classes. We're going to be focusing on meeting the needs of individuals through micro learning. And thirdly, we're going to be showing how to optimize your website or creating your online store. So if you're ready, please type in the chat box, ready. That's all I want to see, ready in the chat box, ready to go on this flight, ready. Thank you. I see your readies. Whoosh. I love it. I love the energy. Thank you so much. All right. So since we're all ready, let's go right into it. <clears throat> now let's talk about creating pre-recorded classes. You see, organizations right now may have smaller budgets, right? They may only want to train two to three staff on a particular skill. So in the past, organizations may say, oh, we want to train this want to train 20 people on this particular skill maybe five people really need that skill but they just put like 15 people extra just to make the numbers up and really not waste the opportunity to also pass information across but now that organizations have smaller budgets the real need may just be two to three staff it may just be two to three staff and so you still need to meet the needs of that two to three staff that need to learn a particular skill also, smaller organizations have training budgets. They have training, but they have training needs for smaller budgets. So if you look at smaller organizations, like normal smaller organizations, not like the um, blue chip companies, they still have training needs, but they have smaller budgets. And so what can we do? Um, so Rahit Sami, um, how to manage copyright issue? Um, I'm guessing that's a question. But could you please expand, expatiate on that? We will talk, uh, we will talk, could you please expatiate on the question and um, I'll be able to answer you, okay? Now, smaller organizations have training budgets, but they still have, they have training needs, but still have smaller budgets. So you still need to be able to meet the needs of smaller organizations that have training needs, but smaller budgets. And you also need to meet the needs of, organ, of uh, staffing companies that have needs, but maybe they're just two to three. And this is where, thank you so much. Oh, Rahid says, um, so Rahid has a question, how to manage copyright issues. So I'm guessing you're talking about copyright of your recorded classes, and we are going to talk about that. We're, going to, we're not going deep into that, but I'll show you how to manage access in access to your pre-recorded classes, how to manage access, okay? Now let's go. Now, on-demand training is a strategy that involves making learning solutions available anywhere and anytime. Do you see? So it is important for us as trainers to also get on the bandwagon of on-demand training so that people who need to learn at any time, people who need to learn anywhere can take our own courses. This is a strategy that the world is moving to now and this is one of the trends right now in L&D, and we have to move along. Now, pre-recording your classes allows you to create on-demand training and meet the needs of smaller organizations or organizations with few people to train. So you don't have to be in different organizations at the same time. You don't have to be in different organizations at the same time. You can be, you can record your class and record it for this organization, and you can also use that same material or record a different material for another organization. But further down in the training, I'll be talking to you about how to restrict access to your trainings. And I, at this point, I think I'd like to turn off my camera so as to help people with smaller bandwidth so that everyone can enjoy the training. Please, with your permission, I'd love to stop my video so that anyone who has 
um, who doesn't have great bandwidth will still be able to enjoy the training. Thank you. Okay, so pre-recording your classes allows you to create on-demand training. It allows you to meet the needs. So you can be in multiple, you can be in your home and an organization is using your training to educate their audience, is using your training to educate, to train, and to pass information across. Now, what are all the benefits of recording your classes? So I just mentioned one now to say you can be in your home and the organization is using your training, using your recorded, pre-recorded materials to train their staff. So I'd like you to type in the chat box, what are the other benefits of recording your classes? Would you please type your answers in the chat box? Thank you, looking forward to your answers. Saves time, thank you. Thank you, Anita. Thank you. Yes reach anywhere geographically so yes definitely you can expand your audience geographically uh there's one response that is kind of interesting to to assess yourself so maybe record it and then watch the recording to see how you're doing on camera which is which is a great idea save time uh to to do self-assessment for improvement mm -hmm. uh give multiple trainings at the same at the, on the same day so it will make it more affordable, I guess, for everyone, for clients in the first place. Uh, it allows you to multitask, to improvise. Yeah. You don't have to repeat the same message over and over again. You can reach out to the maximum number of trainees and organizations. So this is cost effective mm -hmm. and allows you to unearth mistakes. So these are the responses that uh, the responses that we have received so far. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. This has been so helpful, so, so helpful. All your contributions are so powerful. I see, and I love that one you also mentioned, Anna, which I'm just gonna scroll back up to to see now. It says to assess yourself. And someone else says here, self-assessment for improvement. So in addition to, um, someone right here says, don't have to repeat the same message over and over again. I love that. And Peter, Jajua says, which is out to a maximum trainees and organizations. Michael says it's cost effective. And Abdul says, allows you to unearth mistake beforehand. Lovely. Awesome. Thank you all so much. These are very powerful benefits of recording your classes. And so you see that it is almost impossible for us to be trainers in this age and time and not have our classes pre-recorded because someone says something interesting that I want to read out. Um, he says, gives, giving multiple training the same day. So if you're able to give multiple training the same day, then you can always make more income using that training on that same day. This is very powerful. Thank you so much, everyone. Now, here's one of the ways you can pre-record your classes. You can pre-record your classes. Thank you, Hugo, I see that, cost reducer, thank you. You can, re you can record your classes by recording a talking head video. So a talking head video is simply what you see this um, young man doing here, is when you are facing your camera, you're facing your camera and you are training. So your participants, your learners can see your slides. What then needs to happen is that you need a video editor to merge your slides and your video together, but you can use a talking head video. Another method you can use to pre-record your training classes is to record your computer screen. You can record your computer screen using different type of software to record, and you can record either your screen alone or you can record your screen, which is your presentation slides and your face. We'll talk more about that. Now, let me ask a question, because I know that some of you are very, I mean, lots of people, most of you on this call are very experienced and forward thinking. If you have recorded your screen before, what screen recording software did you use? Right? So I know that some of, most of us on this call are very forward thinking. 
Thank you, Mary said, she, thank you. I see them coming in. Thank you, thank you. Awesome. So some of the platforms mentioned include Zoom, Microsoft Teams, OBS Studio. I personally never heard about this one. <laughs> Zoom again, the Microsoft Teams. So these are popular platforms. Surprisingly, no one has mentioned WebEx, where we meet uh -huh. every month. Zoom, Zoom Teams, OK. All right, thank you very much. Ah, I said to said WebEx too. <laughs> thank oh. you. I feel better now. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Anna. And thank you, everyone. So it seems like Zoom has a day. And so I'm going to thank you. I never heard of OBS Studio either, but I think it's going to be such a powerful one. Microsoft Teams, Zoom. Thank you, everyone. So I'm going to go into what I have used and what works for me. So, yes. We have our beloved Zoom here. Unfortunately, I also didn't mention WebEx. <laughs> Sorry, Anna. Um, but I have used, thank you, Lillian. Thank you. Thank you so much. I have used Screencast or Matic. I have used Vimeo. And I recently learned about Loom and I tried my hands on it. And one of the reasons I love these four screen recordings, uh, uh, screen recording software, I love particularly Screencast because I have used it extensively and it allows you to do a little bit of video editing as you record your screen. And once you're done recording, it allows you to do a little bit of video editing. It allows you add caption, it allows you add background music, it allows you almost, it allows, yeah, it allows you add caption and background music. Another thing I love about Vimeo is that Vimeo helps you to customize your it allows you to customize your, your, your video, your recorded video. So you can add your logo, you can add your brand colors, and it just makes it look beautiful. Okay, so thank you so much. Um, if you've not heard about any of this screen recording software, I, I would love you to check it out. Check them out. Try your hands on them. They're simple. But you, once you click on them, you follow the prompt, and you'll see how to use it. Okay? Now, here is how I have used the screen recording software in the past. Now, the first thing you need to do is create your Microsoft PowerPoint keynote slide. You need to create your slide. And I know many of you who have used Zoom already understand this. So you create your slides. You start your Zoom meeting if you're using Zoom and you share your slides and teach if you're using Zoom. So for example, I'm gonna turn my video back on. If I was recording, if I was recording, using WebEx, I'm guessing, I would then turn on my video. If I wanted my video to be part of the lesson, part of my lesson, I'll turn on my video and I'll be scrolling through the slides. And this is also very possible on Zoom as most of you have experienced. And if I don't want to show my video, I don't want to show my face, then I turn off my video and I'm able to focus on the presentation slides. So you can do this with any of the screen recording software. And what you do for the other software I've mentioned, which is, which is Loom, Screencast-O-Matic, and Vimeo, is that you initiate the software, meaning that you go to Vimeo.com, Screencast-O-Matic.com, or Loom.com, and you initiate the software. You select the portion of your screen that you want to capture, and you record. You just click on Record, okay? You select the portion of your screen you want to capture, and you click on record. Now here's, a, here's an example of me recording my slides and a video of me using Screencast. So here I was using Screencast. My presentation was showing, my PowerPoint presentation was right there at the back and my video was showing, okay? Now, like I mentioned earlier, you can do simple video editing. Now, why I love the simple video editing is because it costs, it doesn't cost so much. You don't have to spend extra getting a professional video editor. And you can add caption, like I said, background music if the software permits, screencast permits it. However, if you're if you recorded a talking head video, 
then your video, you would have to get a professional to edit that for you and add all, customize it and add all the necessary um, branding elements, okay? Now, let me ask you, because I know again, there are very powerful trainers here. Have you uploaded videos online in the past? So for those of you who have used Zoom to record your screen, Microsoft Teams, OBS Studio, for all of you who have used all of this wonderful, thank you, Abdullah. So what platform did you use? Where did you upload your videos to? What platform did you upload? TikTok. Wow. So I'm, I'm the, the focus is, thank you so much. Thank you. So some of the platforms mentioned include TikTok, Zoom, YouTube. That's good. And I guess this is it for now. Yes, YouTube. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. YouTube. It seems like YouTube has the day. <laughs> so, um, Anita, Ontario. Thank you, Anita. TikTok. <laughs> so, I'm very, I'm very curious to see how the video. I, I know you mean like very interesting videos. Uh, so, uh, the focus here would now be training videos that clients would want to watch. <laughs> I said to says no, never. So don't worry. I'm going to be sharing some platforms that you can upload your videos to so that it will no longer be no, never. And it's be yes, I have. So let's go in. So thank you so much for sharing. It seems like YouTube has the day and I'll tell you why um, other platforms and why those platforms are um, doing very well. So Medi, thank you. Medi says LinkedIn. I love it. I love it. So here are some platforms that you can use to upload your, your course videos, right? And yes, YouTube is one, YouTube is there, YouTube is there, is one of it. And the second one is Vimeo and DigitalOcean. Now I'll quickly walk you through why I choose um, Vimeo. So like I said, Vimeo allows you to edit, to customize your video. You can add branding elements like your color, your logo, you can label your video. You can do all of that. Now, YouTube, I'll share with you what YouTube can do. Now, I also love DigitalOcean because DigitalOcean really is, it just helps you to um, save more. Save more, So you're able to still upload your videos and you're able to, so it, all of these platforms allow you to, to select private mode. And the private mode means that not anybody who gets online cannot see your video unless you send them the link unless you send them the link okay so you have to make sure that you go a step further because anybody who then gets your link can watch your video so we have to find a way to make it private we have to find a way to protect your intellectual property so these platforms are just for you to upload meaning that you take your course from your computer and you put it on the cloud then you can set those videos to private and only those who you send the link to can view the video, okay? Now, so this is an example of what I mean for those who are using YouTube. You put your video on private and share manually. So once you do this, only those who have this link can watch your video. Now, let me ask again, if you, have a, if you already have a website, you can install a membership plugin, right? Okay, so this, this membership plugin is Optimize Press, and it helps you control access to the videos on your website. So this is to answer the question of someone who asked earlier to say, how do I protect my intellectual property? So you see what happens with YouTube or any of the other platforms I shared. If you share your videos on those platforms and you send the link to someone, that person can forward the link to their neighbors, their colleagues, and then your, your course is just going all over the world and you're not, you, you no longer have um, rights over your, you no, you no longer have control over your video. So what you want to do, I used Optimize Press to control access. What Optimize Press did for me is that I installed it on my website. And when I installed it on the website, I was, everyone who paid for my training, they got a username and password, and that was what they used to access the online school. Do you see? 
So it's almost like how you access your Gmail account or how you access your Zoom account. Once you have your unique username and password, it takes you to your special dashboard and then you can have access to the courses. So that way people can just forward, they can just forward your videos, maybe like 30, 40 videos because you already have a membership login on that website. Oh, you're welcome, Rahid, you're welcome. So just check it out, Optimize Press. It can be copied. No, there is a way you can set it. They cannot download your video. They can't download your video. You can set it in Optimize Press. So what you do in Optimize Press, it's almost like you, you, you take your videos from the platforms you have shared it on before. So this is, the, this is how I would do it. I would upload my videos on Vimeo. I'll set it as private. I would copy the embed link and post that embed link on my website. Do you see? I would open, I would post the video on Vimeo, upload it on Vimeo, set it as private to make sure that nobody can, I'll, I'll set it as unlisted so no one can see it except I give them access. I will then copy the embed link from Vimeo, copy the embed link and embed that video on my website. So on my website, I have installed Optimize Press that gives you a username and password to access your own, to access your dashboard. So you can't download that video because it is embedded in my website. It doesn't even reside on the website. Okay, so that helps, that helps to control access. So camera that answers um, your question. They can copy it from your website if you've embedded it that way using Optimize Press. Right, so let's move. Now here, are, now if you, thank you, <laughs> thank you Yvonne, thank you, thank you so much. Now I'll show you another way. Now examples, another thing you can do, um, so somebody's asking, can you control access to videos without websites? So the, the answer is yes and no, and I'll tell you why I say yes. So you can control access to videos without your website if you use these commercial learning platforms I'm showing you, right? So that means you don't have a personal website, but you can take advantage of these commercial learning platforms. That way you can control access to your videos, but you don't have a website. You're depending on these websites. That is the um, yes and no. So that's, that's what I mean by yes and no. So can you control access to, so if you don't have a website, and you're hosting your, your videos on um, video platforms, then you may not be able to really control, um, you may not be able to give people, you know, a username and password to access your videos. You may have to be manually sending them the links, the links to watch your videos. And that's very cumbersome. If you really want to scale, which is one of the principles, uh, the GLC um, learning principles, scalability for your business, if you really want to scale, then one of the things you think about is automating your work in a way. So Rahit says, is this paid? Do they pay for usage? Yes, Optimize Press is not free. You have to pay for usage. Optimize Press is not free. You have to pay for usage, right? And yes. So for the back to the examples of commercial learning platforms, Udemy is you don't have to you don't have to pay to upload your videos on Udemy, but yes, you have to pay a token for Teachable and Kajabi. Okay, so these platforms here are where you can upload your videos without your website. You follow the prompts on their pages. You upload exactly. Medi, thank you. He says I also like Talent LMS. Thank you. That's also a brilliant one. I'm hearing it for the first time. So thank you so much for adding to our knowledge. To this um, afternoon, morning, evening, right? So these websites allow you to upload your videos without you owning a website. And you don't have to think about all, you don't have to think about putting your video in private. You don't have to think about someone um, taking your video and sharing it without your consent. This just makes everything organized. So I would implore you to choose one of these beautiful um, commercial learning platforms, including the Talent LMS. And if anyone would also like to share any other commercial learning platforms like Medi has done, please share with us in the chat box. 
If you have any other modo, thank you. Thank you so much. Train quarters, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Fick. Oh, thank you, Adole. Thank you. Thank you, Fick. Also a great, great commercial learning platform. How do you make on these platforms? So I'm guessing what um, Ahmed Kamara is asking is how do you get on this platform? So let's go into, okay, let's, let me do it. I'll, I'm going to show you uh, a, more, a very simple way towards the end. And it's also in the tip sheet. I've explained very, um, the step-by-step -step method in the tip sheet, but let me just quickly, quickly give you a, a rundown. So the first thing you want to do, for example, if you have a Udemy, if you want to upload on Udemy, is you have to record your videos. That's the first thing. You record your videos. You break your videos down, you break your topics down, and you record your videos. And then the next thing you do is that you upload, you, you, you store your video somewhere, you edit it and make it look pretty. You do, you complete your video editing. Like I said earlier, you can choose a talking head video or you can choose to record your screen. And if you use a talking head video, you get a video editor to edit it for you, make it look professional and nice, add all the branding elements. And if you want to use your screen recorder, then you can do a simple editing with the software, okay? And when you're done, you go to these platforms and for Kajab, for Udemy, I specify that you go to the, uh, I'll, I'll share that later on in the, in the presentation. You go to become an instructor, I'll show you that, and then you can upload from there. You follow the prompt and upload from there. I'll share more with you. Anita is asking a very important question. She says, all of that commercial learning platform need to pay using credit card or PayPal. But in countries where credit card and PayPal is not common, what choice do we have? I love that question because I have been there. I'm talking to you right now from Lagos, Nigeria, and it's always a struggle to have to use PayPal sometimes. And so it's a struggle sometimes to complete um, payments with credit card. So for those, um, I have that answer for the down in the presentation, but let me just you know, answer it here. Um, one of the platforms that we use right now in Africa, uh, specific countries like Nigeria, Ghana, Uganda, Kenya. So Nigeria, Ghana, Uganda, Kenya, and South Africa, you can use these platforms you can use seller.com. Sell, I'm gonna type it. I'm gonna type it in the chat box. For those of you in, you can use seller.com. Right. For those who are in countries like Ghana, Nigeria, Uganda, Kenya, South Africa, you can use seller.com. You can upload your trainings to this platform and you can earn money in dollars in pounds or in Kenyan shillings or any of the currencies of the countries I just mentioned in Naira in cities you can earn your money in any of those currencies I have personally used um seller and your work Anita. I have personally used seller and it has been amazing I have received money in dollars from clients in Finland and it has been just a seamless process seamless process okay you're welcome so the second strategy I want to share with us today is that we need to focus on meeting the needs of individuals through micro learning. We need to focus on meeting the needs of individuals through micro learning because individuals still have training needs. The training budgets have been short I mean reduced, but individuals still have training needs. And how do you know this? People, Luke of course, you know, it was able to share this. People on average search the web daily to learn for and help with their work. Thank you, Mary. Thank you so much. So people on average learn daily. They're always searching for help with their work. How do I do this faster? How can I improve? People are searching. And so it means that there is still a lot of training needs out there. And I'd like to introduce you to the modern learners. Modern learners want to learn new skills that are directly relevant to their work. So many people now want to learn skills that will help, their, help them do better. Skills that, that are directly relevant because with the way things are now, 
there's a lot of remote work going on, the focus is no longer on you showing up at work. The focus now is on productivity, efficiency. How well are you able to do your work? How good are you at it? And you see, that is why now people are like, the focus now is on how well can I do my work? And so any skill that is directly relevant to helping me do better is welcome. And so I'd like to ask you, because I know that we have powerful, powerful, powerful trainers and training facilitators here today. What is micro learning? As you understand it, please share with us today. How do you, how do you define, how do you understand micro learning? Okay. Um, Asegid. Okay, so somebody is telling me, um, can't get training or other products except timber, plastic products, and so on. Please help. Okay, so um, Asegid is asking a very important question. He says, I can't get training on other products except timber, plastic products, and so on. So I'm not sure what, what platform are you talking about, um, Asegid? Please let me know what platform you're talking about. Okay, so. Um, Asagid said, okay, on seller.com. Okay, so Asagid, I'm saying that seller.com is where you can upload your own training. You can upload your own training on seller and have people pay for your training. So that way people have a username and password and they can download your training. I'm saying you can upload your training to seller.com if you are in Nigeria, Ghana, Uganda, Kenya, um, South Africa, I'm saying for that, yeah? So Ketty says, um, micro learning is when you learn from one aspect. Thank you so much. Yes, yes, I said that's what I mean. Yes, thank you, thank you. Right, so Adoli says, yes. Awesome, Anna, do you want to take over from here? Yes, definitely. So uh, other responses I'm seeing is learning directed to individuals or small groups, uh, small package training or training for developed for small learning units. So I guess you know, like you're teaching on small portions mm -hmm. um, you know, of, of the training. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And that's it for now. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anna, and thank you to everyone. So these, you are all correct. Katie says, learn from one aspect, giving short training content. Uh, I love the way target business consultants put it, small packet training, and Rahit says, for small learning units. So thank you so much for those beautiful contributions. Um, indeed, the concept is what you have all described. It, the concept is creating courses that answer specific questions. And so in that way, the training is actually a small packet training. So for example, let me show you an example here. Examples of micro learning. Imagine that you wanted to teach a course and you wanted to teach a course titled how to use social media to increase profitability. Now there is so much that you can put into this course. And I wanted to do this. I wanted to teach women, SMEs, how to use social media to increase profitability. But I then thought about micro learning and I said, it actually helps individuals. It helps them go straight to meet the needs that they have. So they don't get swamped in so much information. And so that I'm also able to meet individual training needs. So I broke this course down into three different courses. And one of them was the Canva Masterclass because it was one of the things I was going to teach in this course. I broke it down again to engaging, to how to write engaging Instagram captions. And the third one, I broke it again into the Instagram Live Bootcamp. And so I was able to help individuals answer questions like, how do I design beautiful posts on my Instagram? I had the Canva Masterclass answering that. How do I write engaging captions such that my audience wants to buy from me? I answer that question with a course. Then how do I go live on Instagram when I'm so shy and I don't even know what to talk about? I created a course for that as well. Do you see how 
micro learning helps you to answer ex specific questions on the customer's mind. And this way, the clients can see themselves in your course and it's easy for them to say, yes, this is what I need to learn. And it's easy for them to know. How many of us have practiced this uh, micro learning in the past? Just, could you just type yes? If you have practiced, please type yes in the chat box. If you have used uh, this principle of micro learning at, what, at one point or the other, please type yes in the chat box. Thank you, Asegid. Thank you to some extent. Thank you, Ketty. Thank you, Vania. Oh, Peter says no. Okay, <laughs> that's good. Thank you, Vaughn. All right. So not yet, but I will. Awesome. Awesome. No, but I want to try. You should absolutely try it because I was able to stay profitable with these courses and it is a strategy that worked for me and it's still working for me because I'm still creating more micro learning courses and I employ you to also try it. I employ you to try it. Okay. And so let's answer this question together. Now that we have explained what micro learning is, and most of us, some of us have, some of us haven't, what are the benefits of micro learning? What are some of the benefits? Would you please type your answer in the chat box? What are the benefits of micro learning? Please type your answer in the chat. Thank you. I think it says it gives clarity. Uh, it can be pretty direct and practical, very specific. Ryan says it saves time, saves clients time in the first place. It can be co cost and time efficient, flexible for trainers. Kamara mm -hmm. mentions it gives uh, specific training on specific issues. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of uh, small messages going out simultaneously. It can be cheaper, mm -hmm. directed to a very specific problem. Mm -hmm. Contextual learning in direct correlation with one's job. Mm -hmm. And it can address very specific learning objectives. So I think some answers are repeating now. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Anna. I love, love your contributions. I love them. And the, I mean, I love everything. And I'd like to, you know, just talk about this last one, better engagement for learners. This is so powerful because one of the major challenges that trainers have with putting their training online is that uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's low engagement. So lots of people will buy courses, but they won't complete the courses online. So Lillian, Alex, thank you for sharing. That is so crucial. One of the ways to engage your learners, to increase engagement, is to make the learning more focused rather than have a very broad topic to discuss. The topic, the, the learning more focused, and that is one of the very powerful benefits of micro learning. And thank you, Damaris Manjiru. This is, can be divided into different topics. And can access simple and learners want to come back. I absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Also, let's move on to the next. Thank you so much for sharing, everyone. Now let's talk about the third strategy for today that would help you remain profitable as a trainer. Now, one of the things I have done is to automate my website. So I want to say that you have to automate your website so learners can pay and instantly access your course, right? So one of the things I did to my website, and my website is www.presentright.com, the online speaking academy for women, was I got a web designer. Yes, I got a web designer, because I initially designed the website myself, but it wasn't automated. I had uploaded my courses to it, and I was manually giving out, I was manually giving out my um, learners, their username and passwords. It was cumbersome, and sometimes there was there were the mix-ups here and there. It just wasn't as professional as I wanted it to be, and so I got a website designer to automate my website so that learners can pay and instantly access my course. This is how it is now, but it will cost you some money. It cost me about six hundred and oh, about about a thousand dollars to get 
everything uh, working together. So if you if you're ready to make that kind of investment, then um, you're welcome to do that to your website. Now, another thing is you need to get your courses on commercial commercial learning platforms instead. So um, if you don't want to, if you don't want to um, get a website designer to work on your website, if you don't want to go through all the uh, stress of getting someone to automate your website, you can already get on the commercial learning platforms that we discussed. Um, so I see that, Rahid. I see that um, you could please send me a message after so we could take it from there. Okay, thank you. All right, so you can get your courses on commercial learning platforms instead. And so let me ask now, what platforms have you bought courses from in the past? Because I know, again, that as training enthusiasts and experts, we are constantly upgrading our knowledge. So where have you bought courses from in the past? What platforms have you bought courses from in the past? Coursera, I love that. Thank you. Thank you, MSC Guinea. Coursera, yes, I have also bought, I have also, uh, I think, taken some courses on Coursera. Linda, yes. Mm -hmm. Anna, do you want to take it from here? Uh, New Skills Academy, uh, OOC. Actually, I'm not sure what this platform is. Maybe, um, I, I guess you can Google or maybe you can uh, place the URL in the chat. Uh, Coursera seems like a very popular website, at least among our training professionals. Yes. EDX. Okay. Yeah, that's that, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's it for now. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. M O O C music. This uh, Coursera seems like a very, <clears throat> like uh, Anna said, very popular website. Yes, it is. So again, here are some of the um, commercial learning platforms. Like I mentioned, you can upload your courses on this site, and you can also get courses to buy on this site. Okay, you can also get courses to buy on this site. So if you don't want to go through the stress of getting your own website automated, you simply record your videos and get them on this site so that other people can buy from you. Um, Coursera, I believe, um, is, is not, doesn't accept individuals sending in their courses, but these three sites I know, including Thinkific, these three sites and Thinkific, you can upload your own, your own videos. Okay. Yes, and I remember somebody was asking, how do I get my course on the commercial learning platforms? So here is a screenshot of the Udemy platform. And right here you have Teach on Udemy. Once you click on Teach from Udemy, so you first of all have to go to www.udemy.com and then you go to Teach on Udemy. And from there you click on this big red button here say become an instructor. So once you become an instructor, it would tell you to set up your profile. You set up your profile. And after you set up your profile, you it, it will take you through a series um, a, a short training and it will tell it talk to you, it will ask you questions about the course you want to upload and then give you the opportunity to start to upload. Okay, so that is one way to do it on Udemy. Now let's talk about your course curriculum. Let's let's talk a bit about your course curriculum. I know that most of you have got this covered. I'm just going to talk real briefly about your course curriculum. So if you want to upload your courses on this platform, the first thing you want to think about is how am I going to structure my course? So whether you want to upload your course on your website or you want to upload it on a commercial learning platform, you want to think about how do I want to structure my course. And so what I typically do is I take the course itself and I break it down into modules to say module one is sheet mastery, module two is this. And then I think of what lessons do I want to teach under sheet mastery. So for example, this course is titled basic Microsoft Excel skills. But under module one, I'd only be talking about sheet mastery. And under sheet mastery, I'm talking about linking sheets and adding new sheets. This is how I group topics 
under different modules. And for module two, I'm only talking about editing. And I'll talk about using the copy and paste function and using the paste special function. So the general idea here, because I know we have much more, um, much more complex ways to design course curriculums, but the general and simple idea I just want to share is that you group your lessons under similar headings. You break your course into different modules, in, you know, maybe it could be four to seven modules, um, general topics, and then you list the topics that you want to cover under each module. This is just a simple way I do it. I know that there are more um, professional ways to do it. So you can use this uh, methods. Okay. Now, the second thing you want to do when you are <clears throat> load, uploading your when you're uploading your course on this um, online platforms on your web on your website or on a commercial learning platform is you want to create a presentation template with your brand colors on MS PowerPoint or Keynote. You want to create a presentation template. Template is the word. I usually like to use Canva. I designed this particular one on Canva because it allows you to drag and drop all sorts of beautiful elements and it allows you to maintain a certain look and feel with your presentation. So you can design, you can design on Canva and download on PowerPoint. Um, what other presentation, what other softwares have you used to create presentations in the past? Would you please type in the chat box what other what softwares do you use to create your own presentation? Google slide, thank you. All right, Satu says uh, PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, Mark says Google slides. So PowerPoint presentation seems like a very popular tool. Rahit says Pre Prezi. Mm -hmm. Yvonne also is using Microsoft PowerPoint presentations. So I think we have a consensus <laughs> for the most part. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Anna. So, okay, so MS PowerPoint for the win. Awesome. Well, remember I said I use, I design the presentation on Canva and then I download it as a PowerPoint. I download it as a PowerPoint presentation. Thank you, Microsoft PowerPoint. It makes it so easy. It makes it easy because you have an amazing, if you, if you have the pro version of Canva, you have an ama you have amazing access to lots of pictures, um, elements that you can use to customize your video and make it look really professional and pretty. So this is what you want to do. Thank you so much to everyone. Thank you so much. What you're doing great so far. We'll check out Canva. Is this the right spelling? Absolutely, Caroline. That is the right spelling. Canva.com. You're welcome to check out Canva to design your presentations and so much more. All right. So you're welcome, Caroline. So the third thing you want to do when you are uploading, optimizing your website is you want to create the presentation slides for each lesson. So yes, now you have created your curriculum, you have your curriculum, you have your presentation template. Now you can begin to create the presentation slide. You begin to create the slides and, and you begin to organize your thoughts in your slides. I know most of you, most of us on this call are probably very used to this as training professionals. Uh, this is another step in the process if you're trying to optimize um, your, your, your website. Number three, number four rather, is you want to record your course videos and you want to keep each lesson between four to six minutes. You want to keep each lesson between four to six minutes. Now, let me just quickly ask here, um, how many, wh why, why would we prefer the welcome the earlier welcome why would we prefer to keep our lesson between four to six minutes would you please type in the chat box so i'm saying here that it will be it, it, it would help to record your course videos oh sorry about that no problem um ble kada tagro no problem thank you so much attention span thank you Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Again, I think we have a consensus here. So attention span is the most popular answer. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Rahid uh, clarifies anything longer and they're gone. Yeah, that's right. Thank you so much, Anna. Thank you. Yes, we have a consensus. Anything longer and they are gone. So you see this easy upload. Oh, wow. Thank you, Lillian. This is also another angle. So you see when you have your, I have noticed when I have the, the courses I have watched over and oh, as a good even says, I'll say two to three minutes. Awesome. Explore. You see, so the, the courses I have watched completely, most of the courses are usually the shorter ones. When they are too long, I struggle to know where, what part of this, what portion of this video do I go back to, to learn that exact, that exact thing, to hear that, that, that thing I'm looking for. I have to go through like, you know, the, the entire length of the video. But if the video is, has been broken down into four to six minutes, I just have to rush there. Oh, fantastic. Um, Sharf is showing us his courses. Awesome. That is beautiful. Um, Rai says, it also has to be exciting to stay connected. Absolutely. Caroline says, for me, it also makes the course manageable. I can grab five to 10 minutes and progress through the course steadily. This is absolutely brilliant. Thank you, Caroline, for sharing. Thank you. And so I'm going to go into the fifth one, which is upload your videos to your website or online commercial learning platform. So yes, after you have created your curriculum, you've created your template, you've created your presentation slide, you recorded your video, the next thing to do is upload. You upload it to your, to your site or the commercial learning platform you have chosen. Now that you, now you've done all of this, the next thing you have to do is drive traffic to your website or online store. I promise you, my amazing, amazing audience, I promise you, it is not enough to have a website. I have three websites, and the one that generates the most income is the one I drive traffic to. And so there are, I'm going to be sharing with you some, some ways to drive traffic to your website. And before I share, I know that a lot of us already on this call are very conversant with this. Would you please share with me how can you drive traffic to your website or online store? So I know that Sharaf Al Kibisi already has his um, courses there. Um, Sharaf and all, every other person on the call, would you please share with us how you drive traffic to your website or online store so that people can buy from you? This Thank you. Yes, and I see that. Thank you. Right. Medi says social media making video posts, advertise on LinkedIn and other social media. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Webinars. Yes. Webinars. Yes. Awesome. Right, so I'm just going to go straight into it. Number one, thank you all so much for sharing. Thank you, Mehdi. Um, Caroline says, also promoting the course on my website. You can use YouTube and webinars. I think that is beautiful. So number one is you drive traffic to your website by having a strong presence on social media, which is what a lot of you are already saying. Thank you so much. That is so powerful. You drive traffic on social media. Um, Shah said, I'm not monetizing it yet. Okay, so that you need to do. Um, that you need to do. Now, here's another tip for you. Choose one social media platform and invest content in it, right? Fantastic, Sharp, I see that. You get you to money, that's great. So choose one social media platform and invest content in it. One mistake most um, of us try to do is try to be on all the platforms at the same time. What you want to do is start from one and gradually move as you grow. So you can have a presence on all, but choose one particular one to invest on. Um, very quickly, could you please type in the chat box, what social media platforms do you mostly use? What social media platforms? So I see that um, most of us already have, have said Facebook, LinkedIn, awesome, Facebook, awesome, <laughs> Facebook, LinkedIn. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, awesome. So you can choose any of these ones, just as most of you are mentioning, and start from there. Start from there. Twitter. Thank you, Michael. LinkedIn, Twitter. Thank you so much. 
And so the third thing is you want to educate your audience. This is a very powerful way to drive traffic to your website. So I must say this, while you're, while you're having a strong presence on social media, you have to make sure that the link to your website is on all your social media real estate. The link to your website has to be on all your social media real estate. So your, your, your link to your website has to be on your Twitter, your LinkedIn, your Instagram, everywhere. So that whatever it is you're doing on those platforms, it can, it can lead people to your website. Now, what one thing you want to do is educate your audience. Educating your audience is a powerful way to position you as a subject matter expert. So you can share tips and tricks to do this. You can share myths about this, advantages of this, disadvantages of this. Just generally educate your audience on your social media platforms. Another thing I want you to, the fourth thing I want you to, uh, strategies I want to share on how to drive traffic to you is to use live videos to increase brand awareness and trust. You see, when people, when we see people, when we see them, it's easy for us to connect. It's easy for us to like, know, and trust them. So if you're using a platform that allows you to use live video, a platform like Facebook or Instagram, please um, use the live video um, option so that your audience can see you. And once they're done, they can click on your website link and get to see your beautiful courses. Now, the fifth thing I want to share is that you want to organize a virtual conference or summit to increase brand awareness. And I say this because I actually tried everything I'm sharing with you today. I, I mean, share with you, I, I use. So for example, I go live on, I try to go live every Thursday, 5 p.m. WAT on Instagram so that I can teach and get people to listen. Thank you so much. And um, you can organize a virtual conference or summit. And for example, I held a virtual conference on the 8th of March. And after that came increased visibility, client base and revenue that virtual conference helped me get more clients thank you all so much for being on this thank you as again thank you all so much for being on this webinar with me it has been amazing sharing with you i hope you got value and here's a summary of what we just discussed you want to create pre-recorded classes you're welcome you want to focus on meeting the needs of individuals through micro learning and you want to optimize your website or create an online store thank you thank you all so much so would you please type in the chat box just as we are rounding up what are your key takeaways thank you so much pld thank you please type in the chat box what are your key takeaways thank you yvonne thank you I'd love to see your key takeaways. Thank you. Micro learning. Thank you. Micro learning. Awesome. Anna, over to you. Well, we still have uh, six minutes left. So I was wondering if uh, any of our today's participants would like to, uh, you know, to comment something, maybe add more ideas to elaborate on the ideas that, uh, you know, uh, Diola has shared today. So if you would like to speak, please raise your hand and Mark, who's helping us on the IT side, will unmute you. This is the time when we would like to hear from you. And while everyone is still thinking whether they want to comment or not, I wanted to add one thing. So you definitely want to maximize your presence online, right? Uh, you want to be present everywhere on LinkedIn, on uh, Facebook, or you want to advertise your services, the stream providers everywhere. And I just wanted to remind everyone, if you're not registered on the GLC directory of training providers yet, then definitely do it right now. This is a free opportunity for you to Tell the world that you as a training provider exist to brag about your competences, your certifications and start uh, looking for clients. I mean, we have lots of clients who are already browsing the directory. Um, they're finding many training professionals in different countries, uh, specializations. If you're not there yet, make sure you are. And another thing, make sure that you have uh, the correct email. Because again, uh, one of the comments that we received from a client from a client in Ethiopia, for example, is that they sent messages and uh, the email simply bounced back. So it means that either participants, either, either registrants are not checking their emails, maybe their emails are obsolete or something else. So please stay active, uh, update your profile, update your email address. 
I will stop here for now. <laughs> so do we have anyone who would like to speak? Add anything? Uh, maybe have a question, raise a question. Just raise your hand. Anna, um, Cynthia, yeah, is asking, can you please repeat the group uh, you spoke of, Anna? So I'm talking about the Grow, Learn, Connect website. If you will go to growlearnconnect.org, uh, choose the tab Connect. There is an option for you to register as a training professional. So there are a couple of requirements that uh, we have for you to register as training professionals. You need to upload either your certificate of completion or uh, show that you are certified as a training professional. So basically, if you have taken any course at all as a training professional, such as training of trainers, um, FFF, facilitating face-to-face -face learning, instructional design, or any other courses, and you have the certificate, that, that is already enough for you to join the platform. Um, the requirements, I mean, the, the um, requirements are not very strict, but we want to make sure that anyone who registers is a valid training professional. Okay. Um, I will send the link on to you as well, Cynthia. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. So here I'm sharing with you the references. If you would like to see the references, we have the references to this presentation here. And I'd also like to share with you my contact. So if you'd like to contact me for more information, please reach out to me on LinkedIn, Adiola Babatunde, email at adiola at .com, and you can send me a uh, a message on Instagram at Adiola Babatunde underscore. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Cynthia. And Q&A, any questions? Anybody have any questions? Please feel free. Thank you. Please feel free to signify by raising your hand so that uh, Mark can unmute you. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Right, so Anna is dropping the link. Yes, and I also just posted a couple of uh, links. So one of the links is uh, the link to the survey uh, on SurveyMonkey. We would very much appreciate it if you could please take just a couple of minutes of your time and uh, provide your feedback on today's session uh, and propose any other topics uh, for our reference. Um, other links include uh, the webinar page. So this is where I just posted the tip sheet as well as Adola's presentation. So you can go to the to the webinar page and find all these materials there published already. Uh, I also invite you to read our interview with Adeola. You would be amazed uh, what kind of professional and a person she is. And I also posted a couple of links for our French speaking audience. So these include our interview with Merdi, as well as uh, the webinar page. And again, I will be sending out advice to the French uh, webinar uh, end of this week. So please stay tuned if you're interested. Well, if we have no more questions, I guess we can wrap up today's session. So thank you very much to everyone who attended the session. I will uh, close it right now. Adeola, thank you very much. This was a very informative, insightful presentation, and I'm sure that all the participants will benefit from it. Thank you so much. So I'm Anna. wishing everyone to stay profitable <laughs> and to stay safe. Thank, thank you very you. much thank again you. for joining us. And we'll see you next month for our ninth Growling Connect webinar. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.